Hello, my name is Annika Stockert. And my name is Dorothee Sauer. We welcome you to the presentation of our recent work on the dynamics of language reorganization in patients with aphasia after left temporoparietal and frontal stroke. The work directly builds upon a previous fMRI study in which we investigated the dynamics of language reorganization in a heterogeneous group of 14 patients with aphasic stroke. Here you can see that lesions in that previous study affected all parts of the territory of the left middle cerebral artery. In the following, I'll show you fMRI activation patterns in that study in response to intelligible speech compared to unintelligible reversed speech. In contours, this contrast activated a set of left lateralized temporal frontal regions, including the inferior frontal gyrus, the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, and the anterior, posterior, and inferior temporal lobe. In patients, over the time of recovery, activation changed in three phases. In the acute phase, in the first days after stroke, we observed decreased language activation in the entire network. In the subacute phase, about two weeks after stroke, activation increased in bilateral frontal and left posterior temporal cortex. In the chronic phase, about one year after stroke, frontal activation normalized to the amount observable in healthy controls. The limitation of that study, however, was that we were not able to attribute these patterns of reorganization to the lesion site due to the high variability of lesion location. In our present study, now published in BRAIN, again we investigated patients with aphasia repeatedly during the acute phase, one to three days after stroke, the subacute phase, one to two weeks after stroke, and the chronic phase, more than six months after stroke. A total of 34 patients were separated into two groups with lesions confined to either left temporal parietal or frontal cortex. During each phase, patients' language abilities were measured by means of a language recovery score. These showed that despite moderately severe impairment in the acute phase, both patient groups achieved a comparable good recovery until the chronic phase. Building upon our previous fMRI study, we measured language processing longitudinally by contrasting fMRI activation during listening to speech as compared to reversed speech. On the left-hand side, you can see how language activation changes from the acute to the subacute and chronic phase in patients with left temporal parietal stroke. On the right side, the same is shown for patients with frontal stroke. In both groups, we found a global network disturbance in the acute phase that is characterized by reduced fMRI language activation, also in areas distant to the lesion that resolves in the subacute phase. This phenomenon, we refer to as resolution of diuchesis, was most pronounced in bilateral frontal cortex in patients with temporal parietal stroke, shown in red. A general dynamic we observed independent of lesion location was that subacute reactivation of bilateral domain general networks, for example, in the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex and insula, precede gradual reactivation in left hemisphere temporal language networks in the chronic phase. In line with the restitution of left hemisphere language networks, we found that, independent of lesion location, increased activity in the paralesional cortex can be observed from the subacute phase, in which this continuous activation increase is related to better performance. In contrast, across all phases, activation in the lesion homologue cortex was only observed in frontal language homologues. To summarize our main findings, first, we found that acute global network disturbance in areas distant to the lesion, that is diaschesis, and subacute resolution of diaschesis are most pronounced in patients with temporal stroke. Second, this observation is followed by a gradual reactivation 
of preserved left hemisphere language networks, including paralesional cortex in both lesion types. Third, lesion homolog activation was only found in patients with frontal lesion location, but not in a right temporal cortex. We thank you very much for your interest and hope that you enjoyed the presentation. If you have any questions, we are happy to answer them via email.